Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSA accredited exercise physiologist. In this episode, I want to talk about a really common problem, that being radiation fibrosis scarring, which is a really common condition that can follow radiation treatment. But the catch is that the symptoms of this condition sometimes won't appear for weeks, months, or even years following your radiation treatment. So if you enjoy this video and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below, particularly if you have any questions around radiation fibrosis scarring or any other questions around breast cancer in general that you'd like more information on. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this video, how to treat radiation fibrosis scarring. So first of all, I just want to mention that the reason I wanted to do this video is because I've done a couple of other videos that have focused on how to reduce breast pain after breast cancer surgery, specifically lumpectomy and radiation. And I've also done another video on how to reduce scar pain and tension after mastectomy. Now, both of those videos will feature in some way, shape or form the impacts of radiation, but I really wanted to do a video that was specifically addressing the issue of radiation fibrosis scarring because it's not a term that's commonly talked about in the breast cancer space amongst patients. So patients will talk about you know side effects from chemotherapy or side effects from surgery or they'll talk about side effects even from radiation but it might be more along the lines of things like fatigue or specifically the burns from radiation but the term radiation fibrosis scarring is not often mentioned so that's why i wanted to do this video was to highlight this particular condition because i can tell you right now that when this condition affects women, particularly after breast cancer, and I must say here, whether it's following mastectomy or lumpectomy, it can really impact your quality of life. So second to lymphedema, this is a condition that I treat sometimes multiple times a day in my clinic. So some people will get it in a moderate way and some people get it in a severe way, but it can really impact your quality of life if you do happen to get this condition after radiation. So first of all, let's just talk about what is radiation fibrosis scarring. This condition, as I said earlier, affects people in the weeks, months or years following the completion of their radiation treatment. And the way it presents is as tightening and thickening of the tissue that has been hit by the radiation. So everyone has a individually prescribed regime of radiation and some people will have say chest wall radiation some people have a um, bit of radiation done on their supraclavicular fossa which is this little triangle up the top here some people will have their armpit radiated and some people might get a boost done to specific areas where a tumor used to exist so an intense beam of radiation called a boost now any area that has been radiated is susceptible to radiation fibrosis scarring and as i mentioned it will present as tight thickened tissue but it might also present as painful tissue to touch the tissue might suddenly become uh, quite sensitive to to being moved about or you might say notice restriction in your range of movement when it presents. So you might be hanging out your clothes on the clothesline one day and realize that your shoulder range of motion is really restricted, but that the restriction feels like it's coming from not the shoulder itself, but rather the armpit or the chest wall. Some people have even mentioned that they notice that they can't really take a full breath um, if they've got a really, really tight chest wall. So. Um, these are all the sorts of signs and symptoms that can come off radiation fibrosis scarring. One of the other really common signs and symptoms is a condition known as poda orange, which is literally where your skin can look like the outside of an orange peel. So hence why I held up the mandarin. I couldn't actually find an orange in my house today. We've only got mandarins at home at the moment. Um, but <clears throat> if I show you the skin of this mandarin closely up to the camera um, you'll see all those little dimples on the surface of the mandarin and that is similar to what a skin that has been radiated can can look like 
So the reason this happens is because the amount of tension on the skin causes the hair follicles to invert, which gives it this appearance like an orange peel. So that's powder orange, which is another classic symptom of radiation fibrosis scarring. This more commonly will occur in someone who's had a lumpectomy rather than a mastectomy. So when does radiation fibrosis scarring actually occur? As I mentioned earlier in this video, the earliest I've seen is weeks following radiation. So we're talking around the six week to eight week mark is probably the earliest I see it in my clinic. The latest I've seen it is around the five year mark, but that was a rare situation. I would say that more commonly people who come into my clinic with this issue are experiencing the symptoms in that three to six months following radiation. How do I treat radiation fibrosis scarring? So as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of other videos that I've done that go into quite a fair detail on my treatment techniques for radiation fibrosis scarring and scar tissue tension and pain in general. So I'm going to put a link to those videos up here. So the first video is how to reduce breast pain after radiation and lumpectomy. And then there's another video I did more recently called how to reduce scar pain and tension after mastectomy. So those videos should both go into a little bit more detail if you want more detail on treatment techniques. Now the main ways I do treat it though to summarize are uh, threefold. I do a lot of education. So I teach people what's happening, when it's probably going to happen, what they can do about it, because I do find that education is a fantastic way to firstly reassure people that nothing untoward is happening. Um, this is a normal process that can occur following radiation treatment, um, but obviously also encourage them that there's things they can do about it. So education is a huge basis um, of my treatment technique. But then secondly, I'm encouraging them to massage the tissue in a way that they're working on improving the flexibility of the tissue as soon as their burns are healed. So I'm certainly not suggesting that people should get in and do firm massage while their burns are still recovering. We want to wait until all radiation burns are completely resolved um, before we do any firm massage on that region. Um, and similarly, we also want to wait until the sensitivity of the skin has settled down because you might have a situation where by which the redness um, and blistering has disappeared, but your skin might still be a little bit tender to touch. So I don't really see the point in diving in so quickly and then making yourself really, really sore just for the purpose of getting started maybe half a week to a week earlier. So wait until your skin has really resolved, um, really healed up after radiation treatment has com is complete. And then you can change the focus of the massage that you are doing on radiated tissue. So what we mean by this is we're not just applying a moisturizer anymore to keep the skin hydrated. We're now moving to shift our focus to uh, breaking up the tissue so keeping the tissue as flexible as mobile as possible so go and have a look at those videos that I've mentioned in the links because they will dive into a lot more detail about how to perform the massage when to perform the massage what types of creams to use um, and so on and so forth the second treatment technique or sorry I should say the third treatment technique that I most commonly use in radiation fibrosis scarring is of course Mobyderm which I've alluded to in a lot of my other videos. I have actually run out of a sample of it so again if you're not sure what that is or what it looks like then jump over to one of those videos to have a look. But essentially, I've got the American version with me now, which is called Medi Lymph Pads from a company called Bright Life. So I will put the links to Moby Derm and the Medi Lymph Pads in the description bar below. And these are fantastic products for wearing directly against your skin. Um, again, once all of your tissue is healed up from burns or blisters or whatnot following radiation. And as you wear these products against your skin, it massages the tissue as you're moving about through the day and it's a fantastic complementary treatment technique to you massaging or a therapist massaging your, your tissue. So this is treatment technique number three behind massage and education. 
The last thing I want to make mention of in this video today, guys, is this idea of can we actually prevent or reduce the impact of radiation fibrosis scarring? Because this is such a major issue from what I've seen clinically and certainly how much it can impact the quality of life of the patient, I'd really like to see if we could potentially change the way we go about um, treating this condition and be a little bit more preventative towards it um, being such a big issue for the patient. When patients come to see me and they've got radiation fibrosis scarring, they often will report symptoms like, you know, it's painful to hug somebody. They don't like lying on that side at night. It's uncomfortable wearing a bra. Um, they don't want to touch their own chest wall or breast. They certainly don't want a partner touching that area either. So there's a lot of um, ramifications from this radiation fibrosis scarring condition that can impact daily quality of life. Um, so again, I would like to put the last few minutes of this video towards the idea that maybe we could change the way we go about um, delivering the information around radiation fibrosis scarring because so few people seem to um, be given the the education that they require to be able to act on this condition. I often have patients coming in um, to see me who tell me a really common story, which is when they first start getting symptoms of radiation fibrosis scarring, that they thought their breast cancer was coming back because all of a sudden they've got new sharp pains in their chest wall or breast. There's new lumps and bumps. So sometimes even the um, tissue can feel lumpy and bumpy where the, the thickening and tightening of the tissue is occurring. So again, Again, any, anyone who's gone through breast cancer can appreciate that any new pain or any new lump or bump is going to make alarm bells ring. So a lot of the time what happens to patients is that they end up back with their medical teams very frightened that their breast cancer has returned very quickly when in actual fact it's just radiation fibrosis starting. So what I would love to see happen is that patients get in-depth education probably just before their radiation treatment is complete or, at, or as soon as possible after um, because that's probably the best timing um, to deliver that information. I know there are um, other points at which the information is provided but I think it might be too far back for the patient to remember and again anybody who's been through breast cancer can appreciate that there is so much information to absorb and retain that if the information is not being repeated frequently enough or if the timing of the information is not being delivered in a way that it is timely, then it's not going to register well enough with the patient. On top of this, if the amount of education provided on a topic like radiation fibrosis scarring is not to a level where it emphasizes the potential impact of a condition like this, then the patient probably won't worry about it too much or they might not sort of you know, register it enough to realize that it could be a big problem for them. So timing of education, depth of education, and just um, the fact that multiple health professionals can also provide this information. So radiation oncologists, radiation nurses, and certainly lymphedema therapists or physiotherapists, occupational therapists who are seeing patients following radiation treatment, we should all be drumming home the same message because the more a... Um, piece of education is repeated to the patient, the more likely the patient is going to absorb that piece of information. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. I hope you've gained some great information on radiation fibrosis scarring. If you have any questions related to this topic, then please leave a comment in the section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you have any topics that you would like me to cover in future videos, then again, please leave a comment in the section below. I hope you're having a great week wherever you are. I'll be back next Tuesday with another video. Stay safe over the Easter holidays as well. And I will see you next time.